Okay, holy cow, we're going to do this. We're going to do this. There are four decks, <laughs> four, count them, four, that are still very powerfully uh, in the running for me to consider for this year's Drop em 78 Challenge. And uh, yeah, rather than try to split the four into two different duels, I'm just going to dialogue with all four of them using the significator card that emerged in my last dialogue, the dialogue I recorded like two hours ago, because <laughs> it's October 13th, people. I have to, I have to, I have to move. I have to get her done. So um, these decks, um, what they all share is that they are all decks that I still want to read with. There is a certain aesthetic something that they share too. Um, I can feel it. I'm not sure I can describe it. The first two share a kind of magpie quality that that uh, deliciousness of decks that combine different artistic visions. The first one, the Astara Tarot, uh, combines the four very distinctive art styles of Molly Apple, Applejohn, Eden Cook, um, Krista Gibbard, and Julia Iredale. Each of them take one of the four minor arcana, and then they split among them, they split the major arcana cards. So... The deck has four really uh, different voices. There are some elements that, that hold it together, like in the minor arcana, ace through ten. There are animals that are repeated in all the aces, all the twos, all the threes. Um, but otherwise, it is, it is a magpie deck, but one that I have been in love with since I first met it, which was in a digital format in the Fool's Dog app. Um, this is the uh indie version of the deck which doesn't have brilliant cardstock or, or anything like that but um but it, it was such a unicorn that if i do use this deck in the drop em 78 challenge i will be using this version of it the second deck that i'm using is the alleyman's tarot which is by definition a magpie magpie deck um seven um publisher goblin created this deck out of um, more than 78 different different decks <laughs> and then printed it all on a uniform cardstock in a uniform tarot size. Um, the edges, some of them are holographic or gilded, um, depending on the cards. There are multiple versions of some of the cards, like Death. Uh, if I end up choosing this for my Drop em 78 deck, I will need to cull well I, I will need to figure out how to deal with the multiple versions either i will cull them or i will read all of the death cards when i get there um but i'm fascinated both with i mean i, I have a special feeling about the ostara tarot it has a unity to me even despite the four voices of the artists for one thing i think the artists they're all friends you know so their different visual styles somehow feel combined and connected. But then the challenge of reading with a magpie deck and making it a unity. In some ways, this is the challenge of tarot itself, the way that we weave meaning across disparate, the disparate parts of our lives, the different points of reference. So both of these decks totally inspire me. The last two decks I want to read with, um, and then I'm, you know, then, then, then I've read with all the decks that I'm considering this year. And then, then now, then I've got to actually, <laughs> I've got to actually choose the deck. Um, the last two are, um, oh, what is that artist's name? I can't remember her name offhand, but the Painted Tarot, which is a deck of portraits, basically. And uh, this is, this deck is magical in a way that I don't fully understand. It's very simple. It's very archetypal. Um, the backs are beautiful, by the way. And I've never really worked with it. So the challenge would give me a chance to work with it and to see whether this very simple re reworking in portrait style of the tarot archetypes, whether that, you know, what that does whether that allows me room to, um, whether that allows me enough room and enough traction to do what I need to do. 
And then the final deck, and you know, until I do do a drop on 78 with this deck, it will probably keep being among my finalists, and that's the Mary L Tarot. Um, and uh, this is the first edition, which is the edition I'll use, even though I hate the cardstock. But um, but it actually, I think the uh, some of the cards that got changed for the second edition, I think there was a moving away from what was really provoking and confronting in the first edition, like in the Hierophant. And I actually, I want, I want to be provoked. I also, I like borders, it turns out. Who knew? Though if I do choose this deck, I'm sure I will bring in the second edition for the cards that have been shifted just to kind of get that, that voice in there too. Okay. Yeah. Without further ado, let's dive in. So my significator card from the last dialogue that I did two hours ago, because people, I'm moving, we're moving and grooving. That significator uh, was temperance. I had been working with scarcity and the question about uh, my energy and how to keep from burning out. And that question of fire has been with me since the start of this dueling deck dialogue experience. My very first significator card was the Queen of Wands. So I think the question of my energy has been there. And where the last deck dialogue went was, okay, so some of that sense of um, uh, five of pentacles sort of restriction, that shadowy sense of lack and scarcity, maybe it's coming from not managing my fire the way I, I need to, uh, or not having, not knowing how to have restraint, not knowing how to, to pace myself, not knowing how to let the energy flow, allow energy to move through me in a more sustainable way. And so the question was, well, how, um, you know, uh, shining tribe tarot, how can you help me with this? And the card that I was given was temperance. So we're going to start with temperance. All right. Oh, fantastic. So this is temperance in this, in this deck, which is really a card that's about balancing above and below the, um, we have predators at the bottom and, and prey at the top, those two animals and this sense of this figure of temperance who is holding the box that produces both. So a, a card that's about conflict and carnage potentially right? But how does the world find balance in the midst of that? And what's so powerful is that the two cards that came up around it were the moon, like, yes, sir. <laughs> okay. Intuition, the soul, the unconscious, all of the waters of the deep and the seven of freaking swords, which I've been thinking about all day long as I think about Israel and Gaza. And I think about you know, how do we resolve uh, conflict, violence, tension, all of that in the world? And, and where is the possibility for restraint? Okay, I am, in the interest of time, unless things seem super uncertain, well, I, I don't want to, I don't want to unfairly, because time is running out, I think what you're saying, I, I don't want to cut short this dialogue. So I think what you're saying to me is you're going to help me with this effort to understand, to understand how the world of intuition will, how, how to bring more balance, restraint, uh, wise, skillful use of my energy into the world in, in relationship to, to this, the intuitive work, the work of the psyche, the work of the spirit that I'm, the work of the soul that I'm dedicating my life to, you're going to help me figure out how to do this in a more sustainable way? Is that, am I getting it right, Astara? Is that how you're helping me? And your four of cups, okay. Which is a card that I've seen a lot in this deck. Um, are you, are you turning your back to, are you the figure in this card or is that me? Are you saying, are you saying accept what the cup that you're offering and don't try to look for more answers right now? Are you saying you're helping me deal with my dissatisfaction and my unsettledness? <laughs> a 
Okay, I got it. You're saying the moon. Rest in this, rest in this. The moon, the intuition. There you go. Hand on my heart. Okay. Um, yeah, I just want to note this. I'm chipping these cards just by shuffling them. This, I'll want to be very delicate with this deck if I end up using it for the challenge. Um, but the Ostara Tarot. Okay. And now we're going to use the Alleyman Tarot, um, which is a crazy deck. Um, I brought it with me to Newt's and I was reading with it there. Um, Newt's Northwest Tarot Symposium. And it's actually a very, a brilliant reader. It really is. Six of Pentacles above, King of Wands below. And this is what temperance looks like in this deck. Now, if I work with this deck for the Drop from 78, I will work with the guidebook, which is very, actually a fabulous book. And it gives the sourcing for each of the cards. And that itself is super interesting. There's a lot of information that that will offer for the Drop from 78 challenge. A lot of ways into reading the meaning of each card. But for now, Six of Pentacles, King of Wands. So again, I you know, the Six of Pentacles is a card that's about give and take and balance, right? And so you're saying, yeah, this kind of mastery over wands, over the world of fire. This isn't a very fiery King of Wands, but... And the black and white of this King of Wands really echoes the black and white of the Temperance. But this sense of harmony, that quality of the six that's about beauty and to fare it in the, the Kabbalistic tree of life. So you're, you're pointing toward this divine balance um, that will allow for a mastery of fire. Five of Swords. What's the conflict here? What, um, by the way, this is the back of this particular card. Okay, wh what am I missing? This Five of Swords is pointing toward, um, you know, the, the loss, what's buried. I mean, what a powerful fucking Five of Swords. You know, what's underground that enables this victory right what's the bloodshed nourishing the roots okay so so you're also i mean as part of the work here gonna be grappling with that shadow realm i feel strongly that i need to pick the bottom and the top this is the bottom whoops oh. the sun oh okay so bringing it to light at the back, but you're going to show me uh, what's illuminated. And then this was what's on top of the deck, the Three of Pentacles. So you're saying you're going to work with me to bring stuff to light. I feel a little bit like a little uncertain Am I missing something here? <sighs> yeah, so this is what happens with this deck is it's really easy to get it turned upside down. So I picked a card thinking it was the back. This is the star. You're going to you're going to turn me upside down, aren't you? But you're you're saying I think pretty unequivocally you keep giving me cards now that are pointing toward illumination. You're going to help me find my way here. Yeah. Um, one last card. Oh, back to the Queen of Wands. Okay. All right. Okay. I'm. I'm gonna. Uh, yeah. I'm stopping. You're saying if you keep going, you're just gonna go back to where you started. But yes. Starlight, illumination, fire. Grappling with what's hidden, what's underneath, what's on the bottom is going to come to the top, including the ways that I keep reading the backs of these cards as the fronts. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay, Ali Mantero. You got, you got some chops. That's a, a powerful deck. 
Um, and now, uh, I'm going to work on the painted tarot. And I really have to shuffle this deck, so. And it is a very stiff deck. It, I can't, it doesn't riffle. Okay, Sophie McKay Knight, that's her name, the artist behind the painted tarot. So, here we go. Temperance. Just look at her. <laughs> She's so wonderful. Temperance. And then the card before her was this deck's version of the magician, the alchemist. And the card after her was the wheel of fortune. And although I'd be a little suspicious because, um, you know, this deck is hard to shuffle, I have really been working it. So I'm, I, I don't think this is just an artifact of these all being, these all being majors. I don't think it's because the deck was not shuffled well enough. Um, I've been shuffling it for a long time with a variety of different methods uh, to work with. I mean, the cardstock feels delicious, but it's very inflexible. So are you saying, um, Painted Tarot, are you saying that you're going to help me, um, you know, with that kind of alchemical balancing and aligning of forces, uh, kind of meet this moment, meet this, the wheel, meet the destiny, meet this time. Is that what you're, is that what you're saying to me? And I feel like I need to take the bottom card, which is the 10 of wands. Yeah, there's a lot of heavy burden and burnout. And then the top card is the seven of wands. Okay. So specifically dealing with fire, and with my identity, that seven of wands is always me. That's one of my cards. That kind of um, bodhisattva, like putting myself out there, kind of like responding, responding, meeting the world, combative, fiery, provoked, and then the burnout. So you're saying this is where I am? And... And you're going to help me with that. Come, come to the alchemist, alchemist and the wheel. Meet my moment. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, you're saying that. Yeah. Okay. So this is a deck that's really going to be all about my fire. I think. And Knight of Wands is a card I've gotten in a lot of contexts. So how to how to be this person. I, but I don't think I need to be that person. I think I need to be a different person or I think I need to move on behind, beyond the Knight of Wands or I need some different tools. Um, maybe with the alchemist, you're saying you're going to give me those tools, but King of Swords. Okay. You're saying pull out, draw back. Okay, find some balance, find some equilibrium. There's a lot of mastery. You're, you're, you're wanting to help me go to the air. Again, air is, a, is an element that's been highlighted in the earlier deck dialogues today. Um, yeah, with the queen of air, the queen of, of swords. Now this is the king of swords. So I think you're, you're, taking me, you're offering me a path toward a certain kind of mastery. Um, of my energies, I think. Is that right? Yeah, you're going to work with me. Okay. I felt like I needed to draw the top card too. <laughs> okay, okay. All right. All right, I got it. Queen of Wands. Got it. Okay, got it, got it, got it. <sighs> there you go. All right, that was interesting. Uh, painted tarot, folks. And now my last de deck for this dialoguing before I actually choose, you know, what I'm going to be working with this year. And uh, Marielle Tarot. Um, 
and I'm feeling very full right now. Like, I mean, I've, I've been doing a ton of dialogues, working with some very powerful decks, getting some very powerful, very resonant image uh, readings. And the overall sense I've gotten in this work is, you know, this reminder that there are, <clears throat> there are many paths up the mountain, as they say. There are many, many, many paths and uh, a lot of ways to get there. And so I feel like there's been a confirmation of that truth in this process, a sense that, you know, I'm going to be dealing with roughly the same materials in all of the decks, any one of the decks that I choose. Um, and there's been so much echoing of this work and of the message and of the intentionality being carried forth. Um, yeah, so Marielle Tarot, what's your take on this? Again, I'm going to be pulling the temperance card, what's above it and what's below it. What's your, where are you in, in this, in this question? Ooh, so temperance was literally the last card in the deck, okay? Right before it was the two of swords. And then when this happens, I then go to the very bottom of the deck, and then that's what was underneath it. So it was, interestingly, whoops, the page of discs. Ah, oh. okay. So both of these are kind of starting out. I'm getting this feeling like this deck is is really smart and is really taking this inquiry to a whole new level. So, you know, what is um what is balanced and in stasis here and what is just being born here. Let me see what Marie White says. The whole of the composition was intended to be in the overall shape of a samurai suit of armor. Okay. More than, more than that, it resembles the human body prepared for war. Lungs full, chest puffed out, arms spread, feet apart and stabilizing, ears perked, eyes intense, hair blazing, alert, strong, prepared. In making the foundation of your future, be fierce and proactive, clear obstacles and conflicts. Plan, prepare, and be strong. Clear a space that your future can grow, that your future can grow in. Have right thoughts and tempered words. Breathe. So this is kind of a little bit reminds me of the the more tothy sort of two of swords, but it's that, that settled space of suspended judgment preparing for the future, creating space to breathe in the page of discs. Um, you know, really at that very beginning, it's funny, my, um, my Zen teacher's grandbaby is, was born either last night or today. I don't know. I haven't heard yet word of, of what happened, but, uh, his daughter was in labor. So yeah, this new beginnings, these babies. So this is like creating a space for the future, creating a space for the future. Okay, so how is that? I can understand how that is the work of temperance to create this space for the future to, it's not just about balancing forces. It's about that wide and broad stance that will support real movement forward. But um, this seems a little abstract and I'm wondering if you can say more. Um, how are you going to help me move toward my future? And what of all my fire, all of this fire stuff that's been everywhere? Uh, you're saying four of swords. Okay. So the rest um, and stability of the four of swords. But what is your four of swords all about? So I just read the guidebook and there's a lot there. And... It's not, um, I'm realizing that working with, with Marie White's words, 
takes a whole act of interpretive effort. Um, and I'm, I will need to do that, especially if I pick this deck for the challenge. But for now, what I'm going to... Okay, so, you know, this is a card that is all about this huge expanse of sky, this uh, stable platform of earth, the, the smoke from uh, the smokestacks that sort of look like lightning or uh, they might all, it might also be lightning strikes. It might be search beams, but this sense of a balance between the vastness of what is above and the solidity of what's below and a kind of openness. Um, how are you going to ground me? I, I sense how you want to give me stability and space, but how exactly are you going to ground me in this work? And you're, oh, this is the card that came up when I was working with this deck for the challenge last year, the Ace of Cups, everything that this figure, this angel represents. Okay, there's a huge realm of soul and psyche and unconscious and watery archetypal depths and the way that Marielle, that this deck works across the binaries of tarot above and below, as we saw in the Four of Swords, uh, sky and earth, masculine and feminine, male and female. So you're going to invite the holding of all of that. Um, I worry that I'm going to get lost in these abstractions. I feel lost right now. Is that is that feeling lost good, appropriate, necessary? <laughs> yes. Okay. Okay. Okay, you're, yeah, you're, okay, bring it on. Bring it on, Marielle, the fool. Bring it on. Okay. Yeah, I have my work cut out for me, folks. So I'm going to um, look over my notes from all of these deck dialogues and come up with my baker's dozen, my 13 decks, or, or less if I can. Uh, for the final the final cut for my bachelor X party um, to see which deck will be my companion will be my partner for the 78 days of the drop from 78 challenge okay stay tuned thank you guys for watching as always thank you for your practice <laughs>